welcome to another design with me video with me <laughs> Charlie okay if you follow me on Instagram you would see that a few weeks ago I had watched the Street Fighter 2 movie and if you don't follow me on there then please follow me because it makes me look much more like a human instead of like a design bot that's on YouTube but I was really inspired by watching the movie and I was hit with this wave of nostalgia for this game that I really loved as a kid and the only game that I was able to beat my brother in when we were very little that and zap snowboarding tricks on the Sega Saturn. So I thought I would hopefully honor 8 year old me and hopefully honor the game as well and create something for my Dribble account using Figma. And I guess I'm also pretty sad that I can't use the Guile theme song for this video. Not like I make any money off of YouTube anyways, but at least I won't have a copyright strike and I think that would be a good way to end off the summer. So yeah, let's get into the video. So before I actually make anything in Figma, I like to sketch out my ideas for what I think this whole dribble shot can actually look like. Really, I'm just trying to figure out what kind of composition I want for the design. So you can definitely do this on a notebook or a piece of paper or a whiteboard. Today, I'm going to be using Procreate, which is what I usually do. And the reason I like using Procreate and my iPad is because I like moving quite quickly. In this phase, what I'm really trying to do here is just sketch out my ideas and kind of just like brain dump, word vomit out everything that I want or all the ideas that I have. And then being able to quickly draw on layers and quickly select things and then move things around onto the page when I feel like it's a pretty decent idea, it makes it a lot easier for me to figure out what I want that composition to look like. It really just looks like a mess and honestly sometimes it doesn't even end up looking anything like what I designed, but that's okay. It's just a way to get myself warmed up and to put myself in that creative space. The actual step one is our layout composition. So the first thing I'm going to do in Figma is create a frame using the F key and then selecting from the expandable menu, social media, and then Drupal HD. What I want to do here is to make sure that I get the layout figured out for what I want to design. Because the sooner that I have this figured out, the easier it is for me to start visualizing what I want to actually create. All I'm doing here is taking the R key and drawing rectangles in different sizes and then positioning them to where I feel like a component that I want to design might be. After I draw out one rectangle, I select it and then you get that blue kind of highlight around it and then I hit Control D. I think on Mac it's Command D and then you can just duplicate that rectangle and then I'm just doing this over and over again so that I have a bunch of rectangles on my screen that I can kind of move around and lay out until I find something that I'm happy with. Again, this might not actually look anything like what the final design is. I think it's good to start out with a plan or an idea and just having it out on the screen like this, it makes it easier for me to visualize what the design is actually going to be and it's really helpful for someone with my kind of brain who just needs to see it to believe it. <laughs> But I also feel like it's really important to not feel like you need to stick to this initial layout that you had created. Like if you had an idea that is really great and it kind of just like flows into your work process when you get into the later steps, you want to really get rid of it, right? I think being able to be flexible and not be so rigid in our design process is great for getting creative and also when you're creating something that's just for the fun of it and it's not really for a client or for anyone other than yourself. So the second step is theming. What I mean by theming is that overall feeling or vibe that you want your design to give off to people. Is it modern? Is it professional? Is it like cheerful? Is it really retro? It really just depends on what you want to show and how you really do it. So how can you make sure that message comes across through the use of pixels, shapes, layout, text, colors? What I've noticed on Dribble is that modern and like really just sleek beautiful designs like that are what does the best and I really wanted to take advantage of this opportunity to create something that I would never be able to create in my real life job. Also something that I really see on a lot of these dribble shots are those extremely well-rounded corners, like almost circular when you look at the rectangles. So step three, I'm actually going to go into each of these components that I decided to put onto the screen. And for this step, I'm going to talk about first the joystick and also the logo. I think it's pretty obvious to create the logo of the thing that you're going to be designing. It just makes it feel like a lot more connected to the brand. So in this case, I chose the Street Fighter 2 logo because that's the look and the particular game that I want want to base my design on and then I also chose the Capcom logo. Personally, I've never really played too much on joystick. The only game that I really played on joystick was actually Strikers 1945, which is an awesome game and I feel like I'm probably going to be making something on that on my channel sometime in the future. So for this, I used the R key and made a couple rectangles. They both have rounded corners and then I also chose a rectangle in the back of it so that it would have like a little bit more dimension and made the color a little darker, like it's a little bit more 3D, I guess. The next thing I did was take the O key and then I made the joystick actual like control 
controls and stuff. So I noticed for the joystick controls, the buttons on the side are actually like angled a certain way and I think it just fits the way that a person's hand would naturally be and like the length of their fingers. So I made sure to include those kind of like different heights, I guess. The, the alignment and incorporated that into my design and then for this I'm just saying like you can choose your controller I put a couple arrows on either side of it so that it would imply to the user that they would be able to select from different controllers that might be available for whatever this turns out into the font that I chose was open sans I'm not very good at fonts or anything really graphic designy because that's just not where my background is from for me I feel most comfortable using fonts that I know are very popular and I know are well received or just like easier to look better with and open Sans is definitely one of them. It's definitely one of my go-to fonts. So yeah, there's the logos and the controllers. So the next step is the character select. And I want to make this one like the highlight of the actual like dribble shot. I chose to go with a very rounded kind of long rectangle. I noticed that on Street Fighter 2 when you're actually selecting a character, I think the little borders around the different characters turn to a bright kind of blue color. So I make sure to incorporate that and also made the chosen character a little bit larger than the other ones that are on the side. I loved having an opportunity to use these sprites. It was just really fun for me because I don't get to use these kind of images in my day-to-day -day kind of work. And at the very bottom, I created little circle menu things to just show like where a user might be if they were on a page selecting different characters. So I just took the O key and then I created a few little small circles. I duplicated them, put them a little bit farther apart from each other. And then for whatever screen I'm on, I chose a different circle to be the orange color and then everything else to be gray. Since I made two of these screens, I wanted to make sure that the page that we're on is not the same page or else that just looks like it doesn't make sense and that's what I ended up doing for choosing your character. I also added a back arrow to the screens to let the user know that they can go back to probably like a menu screen or something like that. So step five we are going to be focusing on the two characters that we selected in our character select mobile mockups and those are going to be Guile and Liu. Honestly I didn't think about it too deep. I like these two characters and they had a lot of really cool assets that I want to create. So what they selected characters I made sure to create a rectangle again rounding out the edges and I chose a photo to put in the top right hand corner so one of the cool things about working for something in dribble is that you don't actually have to stay within the boundaries of whatever element you're creating it's really cool to see things that are like overlaying and like outflowing that's not the right word it's like going past the restrictions of the element you don't get to do that when you're working in desktop or if you're working in mobile so i really wanted to take advantage of being able to do that too as well it also gives a lot of cool dimension when you are creating something just for the show of it and in this screen i decided to highlight some of their combos so i took a orange rectangle and i didn't round out the corners this time i made it into a select kind of looking element and then I selected a different attack for each of these characters. For the background I thought it looked a little too empty so I took their names, I made it very large so it kind of acts as a background texture, I made sure that it overflowed through the element and then I changed it into a very light gray color and I also toned down the opacity so it's like barely there but it still gives that extra dimension that I was really looking for. I used their names again using that bright orange and then overlaid it a little bit to give it even more dimension and then I wrote their names in English and flipped it to the horizontal made it like straight down and then up and then I put it to the edge of their image so I did that for both of the characters and I really like the way that these came out they're so like dimensional I don't know what the right word for it is but it looks like really cool a lot of different textures it looks like it's moving I think that's what I really like about it so I'm pretty excited about those components the other thing I did was create a short description for each of the characters based on what I found online these are just like really kind of generic descriptions about who the characters are and I found these I made them a very light gray using open suns and then I also gave them that rounded rectangle kind of border just so I have more things to fill up this dribble shot So since I had selected a couple moves, I decided to illustrate how a user or how a player would be able to actually accomplish those kind of moves. And for this was really easy. There are so many like online strategy guides when it comes to Street Fighter. I found the ones that I needed and I found the attacks that I needed. And then I decided to mock them up using the shapes that Figma provides. So to create that little rounded arrow, what I did was take the O key, create a circle, and then I dragged it out until I get like a specific thickness with the border that I wanted and then I made it black. So once I got that particular angle that I wanted, all I did was go into my shapes thing in Figma and then I selected a polygon and I drew a little triangle over it to make it look like a arrow and I combined all the shapes together to create that kind of like 
do do kind of like movement of the joystick that you need to do. And then for the actual like fist, I took a circle again and then I drew a black circle. I went to flat icons and I grabbed a fist or like a fight icon and I inserted in here. I changed up the color and then I like combined the two shapes by grouping them together. So step seven is to fill out the rest of the page. I thought it looked really kind of just empty. So one of the things I created was a gameplay component. All I did was take Open Sans again and I created a little gameplay text. And then I made sure that the tracking was a little bit higher. So I set it up to 12 and then I also made the font weight bold. Then inside I selected a image of a gameplay action sequence and then I gave it that same kind of round rectangle border. And finally I was thinking like what if this was an application and you were just looking at Street Fighter 2 and maybe you wanted to purchase the game. So that's where the idea for this next element came into play. All I did was take the rectangle again instead of making it white I made it orange and I flipped out the text to make it white instead. I wrote the word purchase down using the same open signs kind of font and then I took the rectangle rounded again in white and I made it into the background for the cover art of the Game Boy version of the game. So step eight is going to be the composition check and what I mean by this is I always had the idea that I wanted this dribble shot to be kind of like angled 45 degrees because I see that a lot on different dribble shots and I thought it looked really cool. It's kind of hard to work and think of the composition when you're working completely in that 45 degree angle so that's why I decided to start everything just like facing upright. Then I exported each of these elements Elements by selecting it and then going into the right hand sidebar choosing export and then I exported it into a PNG because that's all I really need and I made sure the background was transparent. Once I had that it also made it really easy for me to like make changes and not have to worry about like how the font is going to resize or something when I'm trying to edit it in an angle. So I copy pasted my exported images back into the Figma file and from here I'm just trying to figure out what kind of pieces I want together and how I want the general composition of this ripple shot to be. Mainly I just wanted the elements that were the same to be a little bit farther apart so it doesn't look very like condensed and heavy on one side and I also changed up the sizes if they were the same element. I needed to make sure that even if they were different they still look like they kind of fit all together and what I did was make sure that the spacing between these different elements were the same throughout all of the dribble shots and that just made it look a little bit more clean. This also means just like making sure that the background looked like something that would work really nice and look really nice for the dribble shot. So for this I chose a slightly less like bright and vibrant orange and I thought that it looked like it really fit the whole theme of orange that I had going on in this dribble shot but I also thought that I looked a little bit bare so I took that same idea that I had for creating the character select backgrounds and added a bit more texture by using the Japanese katagana version of Street Fighter and then I also selected a much more subtle orange that was darker than the background but not darker than the orange that I had used on the actual elements in the dribble shot and that just added a bit more dimension to it when I think about dribble I also want to create it kind of like it's floating or something so to do this I created a darker orange drop shadow for all of these different like white rectangle components. So what I did for this was select on the rectangle itself and then I set X to 0, blur to 24, Y to 14, and then spread to 0. And I chose a very dark orange and I lowered the opacity to 62, which is a really high drop shadow, but I think it was something that I needed for this particular dribble shot. Before when I was on Dribbble, I really tried to incorporate some of the projects that I worked on at work and put it into my Dribbble account, but it just doesn't have that right feeling to it and I feel like this one really does. I'm super proud of it. It was kind of tough to start because whenever I design something for work I always have to think about the constraints and the needs of the user. Getting out of that mindset was a little bit tough for me but as soon as I did I felt myself getting a lot more into the flow of this and I just had a lot of fun making this dribble shot. Creating something like this where I know it's not UX but it's still like creating something in UI. It gives you that practice inside a prototyping software and it lets you be creative. I think it's a really great way to keep Keep yourself from feeling burnt out and the best part about being a designer is that you can feel inspired by the other parts of your life that you really just enjoy like if it's a particular book or a music a music a song or even like a game so i have a playlist of design with me videos but they are all kind of different formats and i guess it's just because i'm still trying to figure out what kind of format i want to make these in if you like this format please let me know and if you didn't also let me know all of that feedback is really good thank you guys so much for watching this video if you liked it make sure to give it a like leave a comment and also subscribe to my channel if you haven't thanks for watching bye